Three white men found guilty of murder in the killing of Ahmed Arbery last year. The 25-year-old followed and then gunned down. This was while he was jogging. The three defendants watching the dramatic verdict being read. The man who pulled the trigger guilty on all counts. The other two guilty of murder as well as other counts. We're going to show you exactly what it looked like. This is outside of the courtroom in the moments after the verdict was read. Ahmed Arbery's parents emotional about what they call now finally and delayed justice for their son. I never thought this day would come. But God is good. Yes, he is. He and I just want to tell everybody, thank you. Thank you for those who marched, those who, who prayed, most of all, the, the ones who prayed. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you. We conquered that land tomorrow. Let's keep fighting. Let's keep fighting. Let's keep doing it and making this place a better place for all human beings. And now, now, Quez, which, I, which you know him as Ahmad, I know him as Quez. Yes. He will now rest in peace. Yes. Amen. Come on. And this verdict played out, as did so much of the trial, in living rooms and bars and restaurants across America, covered so much on live TV. Many people watched it as it happened. There you have it, the breaking news, the verdict in the Ahmaud Arbery murder trial. All three defendants found guilty of murdering Ahmaud Arbery. You have just heard the verdict Jury in the Ahmad uh, Arbery the trial. The big headline there, though, is that all three men were found guilty of felony murder. This was a case where the defense tried to do several things to really blatantly racialize a trial that the prosecution insisted was about evidence. I'm not going to go through all of the examples, but it is relevant given the ruling tonight. For example, the defense lawyer at one point requested that black clergy be banned from the courtroom. That was rejected. The lawyers also on the defense side tried very clearly to get a certain kind of jury that they thought would help them, a nearly all-white juror. There was one black juror. The rest of the jurors were white. After the verdict, Reverend Sharpton discussed the significance. And let the word go forth all over the world yes. that a jury of 11 whites yes. and Come one on. black Come on. in the deep south Good God. stood up in the courtroom yeah, really. and said that black lives do matter. Yeah. You came in the state of Georgia, yeah. a state known for segregation, yes, a state yeah. known for Jim Crow, yeah. and you turned it around. Yes, Lord. You took a young unarmed boy yes, that they thought was worthless. Yes. And you put his name in history yes. today. Now, first of all, it's legally true what the Reverend happened to say there about this. The defense was making a bet. One, betting that in that southern area, they could find a more sympathetic jury based on a appeal to supposed white solidarity or racism. And second, the defense was making a bet that they might find one or more jurors willing to accept a legally extreme theory of this secret citizen's arrest. Today, they lost both those bets. The jury accepted the evidence-driven argument of the prosecution, which, by the way, did not focus on race or other things outside the courtroom. It focused on the evidence and the facts, which showed three people tracking down one unarmed person and killing him. And a jury, we see, accepted those facts reasonable and probable grounds of suspicion. Everybody in this case had a gun except Maude Arbery. And a citizen is in the same shoes as an officer when it comes to citizen's arrest. So it's not a citizen's arrest. They never said it. None of the defendants saw Mr. Arbery commit any crime that day. Three times he's demonstrated to you that he does not want to talk to you, correct? Yes. He's also demonstrated he's no threat to you. He hasn't pulled out a gun. That's correct. I mean, come on, let's get real.